The following video is brought to you by Yellow Jacket. Nearly 70 years of quality HVAC tools. And Parker Sporlin. Check out the zoom lock from Parker Sporlin and imagine a life without brazing. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, December the 21st, I believe, yeah. We are headed back over to the water place where a couple videos ago, we repaired that leak on the reversing valve. I think that was done a couple weeks ago now. Well, they called me out Monday morning and said that the heat pump quit heating again and they had to move over to their, their strip heat. I said, okay, well, I'll come out there and take a look at it. I got out there and the condenser would run for a few seconds and cut off. Well, it ended up being the low pressure switch was kicking it out. That unit lost all its charge again. The condenser coil, at the bottom of the condenser coil, it busted another leak inside the condenser coil. When I did that repair, I, you know, y'all saw I put 150 pounds of nitrogen on it. I let it hold for a while while I went to go pick up my son. No, 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 that's not right. I let it hold for about 10, 15 minutes. Then I put the vacuum pump on it while I went to pick up my son. When I get back, when I got back, I was down to 200 and something microns. So I said, okay, well, we're good to go. I gassed it up. Everything was fine. And uh, they said it did great until they just, they noticed it Monday morning. So it may have busted over the weekend when they weren't there. So I went out there and I found, and I, I've done several repairs to this unit, several repairs. Uh, I told him, I said, look, all the money y'all got tied up in this unit, you know, and then the other day, and then if we do another leak repair, I said, y'all are almost in a new unit. And they said, yeah, we agree. We don't want to repair it again. I said, okay. I said, the only thing I'm worried about is a 2007 air handler. I don't know if it'll work at 410A. So I made a phone call over to my Ream distributor, uh, which is my also my comfort maker distributor. And, you know, I'm a Ream dealer. So the coil that's in there is not made for 410A. It's got an R22 TXV and it's copper. So there's chances that it might be leaking also. They said, but if you buy a replacement coil for that air handler, it's got a 410A valve on it and it's aluminum. I said, okay, well then that's the route we'll go because the air handler's in great shape and the coil was very inexpensive. Uh, so I got a replacement coil for the air handler. So basically we'll slide the old coil out, slide a new evaporator in, tie it in, then we're gonna tie in a new condenser and we're doing a ream. We're gonna do an RP1436 because it's a rude air handler, same thing as ream. And we're just gonna keep everything matched up in the Ream family. So we are not far from there and we'll see you guys when we get there. All right guys, well, here's the patient again. You recognize her from the other day. No gas in it. I'm gonna cut this out, cut the old dryer out and I'm gonna put the new dryer inside. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. I'm gonna get to tearing and ripping and I'll get you guys some shots. All right, guys, the old Rude is gone. The new RP-14 takes its place. Very nice looking machine. Every time I do a ream, which is not very often, I always wonder why I don't sell these instead of the ICP. But I guess it's because of my love for ICP. But I love these too. Because every time I do one, I, I enjoy doing them. So, everything will go right back in. Copper, whip, everything will fall right back into place. So, I'm going to get started hooking that up. And we will get back with y'all. Alright, guys. We've got the new unit all brazed in. Well, the condenser. I decided to go ahead and put my dryer out here. Here's the old coil. Copper coil, expansion valve, and if you look right here, 
R22 only. Here's the new coil, aluminum, expansion valve, R410A. So we're gonna go slide that in the air handler and we should be good to go. Here's our air handler in the closet. New coils in place. Got out of the way so it don't overheat. Here's my lines. Braze them in. I have the system in a vacuum. We are already down to 46 and 100 microns and dropping. Got the core out using one. Appion half inch hose with an Appion core tool removal tool. Microns are down in the 3000s. I'm going to go inside and button up the air handler. Then I'm going to tie in my electrical out here. And that'll be it. Should be, and I'm going to install a float switch inside. I'm going to install an SS2. They didn't have one. I don't have an SS1 with me, but I do have an SS2. There was no trap on the air handler, so I'm also going to put a P trap on the drain. And then after that, we'll be good to go. The microns are still dropping. We're almost down in the thousands already. The one thousands already, I should say. Uh, almost there. There we are. Looking good. Right, guys everything's done as you saw in the picture just now on the air handler we added a trap a float switch everything looks good this came out really good I just got to arm flex my suction line but I'll do that after I take my pipe clamps off I got my damn field piece wireless probes and I still and I haven't put them in my truck and today man this would be a great time to use them I'm so upset I, I don't have them in the truck because I didn't think I'd be using them anytime soon, but it's like, it's like 75, 70, between 75 and 77 degrees out here. So I wish I did have my wireless probes because this would be a great opportunity to use them. But we're waiting on time delay and we'll start it up, charge it to about between 8 and 10 degrees of subcooling. And that'll be all she wrote. All right, guys, the unit's running. Nice and quiet. Pressures are coming around at about five degrees of subcooling. Got a high load in there. It's 80, it's 80 degrees inside this little building, believe it or not. It's a little metal building. The unit is a little oversized for the building, uh, but they didn't want to downsize it. I don't blame them because it's a metal building. It's not very well insulated and people go in and out all day. Right here through this door to pay their water bill. All that over there is not conditioned, just from here to right past that window right there. It's a little oversized, it's a little three ton, but it's technically, it's a little oversized, but with the metal building, flat roof, not much insulation and the door opening all in and out. It takes three tons to cool it. So it did just started, it's been running maybe three minutes. So we'll let it run a few more minutes. All right, guys, there she is. Final product, everything's done. Everything's picked up, cleaned up. Nice looking little three ton heat pump, RP1436. Line set came out really nice. The whips went right back in, they look great. Got a low voltage whip, everything looks good. Very nice equipment right here. All right, guys, we're pulling away from the water department here. Good customers of mine ever since I moved. As long as we've been living out here in this little town, they've uh, always called upon us to take care of their needs. And uh, job went really good. I'm really happy with the way that it came out. But I tell you what, this is damn ridiculous. It's 78 degrees here. 78 freaking degrees in Louisiana four days before Christmas I'm sweating I mean 
it literally feels like it's summertime. Unbelievable. I got another job to go look at uh, that people just called. They uh, One of my competitors was out there and uh, it's a train air handler is what it sounds like because they said that it had a bad contactor on the heat kit. So I'm pretty sure that's a train. Uh, normally, because you know, the old trains had uh, contactors on the heat kit, but you know, they recommended a system replacement and blah, 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 all that. So we're going to look at that. She called, she was referred to us by one of her friends for a second opinion. So this is gonna be a second opinion slash possible estimate, we'll see. Or it may end up turning into be just a simple repair. If I can video it, I will. I'm not making any promises, but I'll try. All right, guys, if I don't talk to, and I, look, if I don't talk to you guys bef before Christmas again on YouTube, which I probably won't, it'll probably be after Christmas before I get another video up. I wanna wish everybody a, a very, very Merry Christmas. Um, I hope that your Christmas is blessed with you and your family. Stay safe. I hope that you're able to get together with your family and have a great Christmas. Um, I'm very fortunate to still have my family, you know, between, you know, my wife getting in the accident and all the other stuff that's been going on. So I'm very thankful. And I hope that you guys have a very Merry Christmas. Thank you all for watching the video. I appreciate it. Thank y'all for listening to the podcast, to the ones of y'all that do. I appreciate that. I know Gil does too. And that's another thing I want to say. If For those of you that listen to the podcast, or even if you don't, my co-host Gil Cavey has started a YouTube channel. He's been uploading videos. He's got about five of them up there, I think. And they're, they're not bad. They're good. And they get better every time. And, and he's putting up content. The name of his channel is HVAC with Gil Cavey, and I'll put that right here on the screen. That way you know how to spell it. I'll even try to put a link to his channel at the end of this video up in the corner or over here or here or here or somewhere. I'll try to put a link to his channel where you can click on it. Go go check out Gil's channel and, so, and make sure you like it and subscribe to the channel. And if you have not subscribed to the HVAC After Dark YouTube channel, do that as well. HVAC After Dark Podcast YouTube channel. We do giveaway, live giveaways on that channel. And, you know, you, you can enter for a chance to win great prizes in that giveaway. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for the support. Have a very Merry Christmas. And we'll see y'all on the next one.